Hey, everybody, God bless you. Hey, you know, I hope you enjoy Hebrews chapter 5, and then we're going to Hebrews chapter 6. And one thing I want to bring out to you, because you know we're doing about the works of the flesh and the fruits of the spirit. The fact is, I do want you to know this. Stop trying, try, stop trying to impress or be perfect around imperfect people. What do I mean? Oh, I got shortfalls. Guess what? You got shortfalls. We all got shortfalls. And if we're trying to impress one another, of, of being perfect, you you deceive yourself because imperfect people cannot accept perfect people. She goes, what are you talking about? Oh, I'm, well, I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact is that imperfect people have issues, just like you have issues. And if you're trying to perfect and you're trying to uh, get acceptance of from imperfect people for be, to be perfect, <laughs> you, you're going to be wishful thinking and not going to get anywhere because we all have issues. So why are you going to sit there and try to say that you're perfect or pretend you're perfect or try to prove you're perfect when you're going to find out that everybody else has some imperfection, some area they got to work on. So when we did the work of the uh, works of the flesh and Galatians and the fruits of the spirit, all we do is sign up that I'm going to tell you something. All of us have issues in one of, the, in one of those categories in there. And, and, and I mean, I can get an amen on that because I don't think anybody can, can can sit there and say that they don't have some area in the works of the flesh, even envy or hatred or strife or, you know, there's things that we have to work on. Anger issues we have to work on. Jealousy issues we got to work on. We are imperfect people. And the only way you'd be perfected is through the lead of the Holy Spirit and letting God works on you and please Him and let the Holy Spirit works on you. That's why you come for Him to be Lord. Amen? And, and the other thing too, the fact is that God loved the world and gave His only begotten Son. He gave His Son when we were imperfect. What much more would He do when you come to be a child of God? You know what I mean? So I just wanted to throw that at you. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore leaving, look at this, now look at this. This is, this is people who want to leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Therefore leaving the principle of Christ, or the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. <laughs> so we, we leave the principle of Christ and go on to perfection. That, that's, that's what, not laying again, look, the foundation of repentance from dead works in the faith toward God. We, you know, not doing that, right? Of the doctrine of baptism, we won't do that, right? Laying on of hands and of the resurrection of the dead and the eternal judgment. We won't, we won't just get rid of all that. And this will we do if God permit. They guarantee imperfect people, they will do those things. For it is impossible though, for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, meaning the Holy Ghost rests on them and dwells in them, and have tasted of the good word of God and the power of the world to come, if they should fall away, come on now, if they should fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucified to themselves the Son of God of flesh and put him to an open shame. They, they basically like spit in his face. He got on the cross, we're gonna spit in his face. He rose again, we're gonna spit in his face. And that's what that's what the flesh and, and, and reprobate minds will do. Imperfect people. Mm. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh off upon it, and bringeth forth herbs meet for them by whom it is dressed, receive blessing from God. And just like when you receive Christ. You receive blessing from God. But that which bears thorns and briars is rejected and is nigh unto cursing, who in is to be burned. But beloved, we are persuaded better things of you and things that accompany salvation through though we thus speak. For God is not unrighteous to forget your works and labor of love, which you have shown toward his name. 
and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. Huh? God won't forget that. God is with you. God trusts you. Come on now. Look at this. Because we're now going to good. We've got ten, first 10 verse, then we're going to the next 10. Verse 11. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. That you be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Well, we have subtitle here says, The certainty of the God of God's promise. For when God made promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. He ain't going to get it from imperfect people. <laughs> Saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee, and multiply, I will multiply thee. And so as he had patiently endured, he attained the promise. For men, come on now, verily swear by the greater. And an oath of confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Wherein God, willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel conferred by an oath. See, God made a promise. We come into the body of Christ, he had a promise to us, huh? That there are two immutable things in which it is impossible for God to lie. Now, you know imperfect people don't lie. We're talking about God. We might have a strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Come on, y'all. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. That the word will anchor you. The word will keep you going. The Holy Spirit, the Son, the Father. Come on now. Both sure and steadfast and with, which enter into that were in the veil. Within the veil. Whether the forerunner, forerunners is for, for us entered, even Yeshua made a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Man, come on, man. You, you, God... This, the promise that we're going after is the promise from God. The, the Son was sent to redeem us and reconnect us to God. You can get excited about that because when you try to impress imperfect people, mm, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get the disappointment. You're going to get judgment. You're going to get condemnation from, from people, but not from, not from God. God knew you was imperfect. But for some reason, some of us feel like we 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 always had it going on, but you don't have it going on. You you got issues, you know. That's why we did it. So don't condemn yourself when you look at the works of the flesh. You need to sit there and say, "But God, <laughs> but God." So Galatians read it again. So not for condemnation, but to say, "Deed of errors I got to work on." I don't know how long it's going to take me to work on, but I'm working on it. Look at this. For this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, as I struggle. And these are contrary to one to the other, so you cannot do the things that you would. But if you're led by the spirit, you're not under the law, right? So I got to get the law from you, so you make sure you, you're not condemning yourself based on the law. For this way to sin is dealt by the law. Now, the words of the flesh... Are manifest which of these adultery and fornication and uncleanness and lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, envy, murder, drunken, and reveling, and such like of which I tell you before, as also told you time past, that they would do such things shall not, shall not enter the kingdom of God. That's because if they do those type of things, and that's why we gotta work on it, our imperfections. Because these are the things that we ought to work on as far as our imperfection. And we need to understand we can't work on by the law. But look at this. The fruits of the Spirit. But the fruits of the Spirit, verse 22, the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and such. There is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desires of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another, love one another. That goes Romans 10 out of 10. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Yay.